Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. 300 movie thoughts. Now, when... When Delius is sent back, he, of course, offers to transmit, to, to relay a message. And basically, he's saying Shall I tell your wife you love her very much? To which the reply is, she knows. The, the giant is a really awesome creation. Just this... Yeah, just, just sheer force and clearly able to take out. I'm, I'm really glad that they do make sure to show Spartans falling in this as well. And yeah, just, you know, Leonidas is nearly decapitated by the giant axe and yeah, it's, it's a really cool fight they have there. I quite like the whole Everything involving Ephialtes with, you know, he, he comes to them, he comes to Leonidas wanting to be a warrior. He is rejected. He, you know, he gets bribed by Xerxes and, you know, he does ultimately feel bad. He, you know, when, when told, may you live forever, which is a nice... You know, the, the couple of different meanings there is quite nice. Same, same as with, you know, come back with your shield or on it. And, you know, with, with Ephialtes, he's basically, may you never be forgotten as a traitor. His name literally is Greek for nightmare, so there's, you know, may your name itself forever be, you know, an, a negative term, and, you know, may you never enjoy the Spartan glory of a beautiful death, as Fassbender's Stelios puts it. And, yeah, the, the whole thing with, with him is, is quite nice. Now, I mentioned in the review video that I don't really see it as anti-disabled. Rather, I view it as if Leonidas had, you know, if, if Sparta hadn't been pro-eugenics, if Sparta hadn't been so... Yeah, so, so prejudiced, then Ephialtes would have been able to sort of, I mean, he had no reason to seek out Xerxes. He, he could have gone to Xerxes first. It, you know, I mean, there's that whole thing of, you know, playing for the winning team. He did not even consider that before he was rejected by Leonidas. And... I, I don't know, I, I think that if one is to take any meaning from that, it is to not reject someone who comes to you wanting to help. It is to make, you know, make sure that that can, can happen, you know. Now, the... but, but... You know, I can certainly see it. It is a very black and white film and comic. Now, 
the whole thing with Gorgo and Theron, I, I thought it was quite nicely done. I, I mentioned in the review that I did not realize, I didn't read the comic before I watched this in theaters originally when it came out. So I didn't know, I just, you know, this came out after the, after Sin City. When I found out Sin City was going to be coming out, I made sure to read up on it. I mean, you've got Frank Miller and Robert Rodriguez working together. That, you know, yeah, I, I was going to do my research there. So I read all the Sin City comics that were made into the Sin City movie. And, you know, with, with that crash course on Frank Miller in, you know, the back of my head, I, you know, everything in this film seemed to fit the Frank Miller vision. And, yeah, it, it was very surprising. I, I just read, you know, over the last uh, week or so, building up to re-watching this and doing this video, read the comic, I was surprised to find that indeed, as I had read online, Theron does not exist in the comic and the Queen is only seen at the very start. And not even as much as she's seen at the start of the, you know, of, of the film. She's just, she has like maybe one panel or something in the comic. So, yeah, I, it, it works out really well. It makes complete sense that, that that's what Gorgo would be doing. And Theron, you know, being basically, you know, I mean, he's, he was corrupted from the start. He, he goes with the Persian up to the E4s. You know, the, there's the, the backstory of one year ago the, you know, the Persian emissary is, you know, arrives at Sparta and clearly Theron was talking to the, you know, the, the Persians and there's this nice little bit where Gorgo is basically saying you're trying, you're conspiring with them, aren't you? And he's like, no, 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 I mean, I just, I was just walking alongside them, just uh, keeping them company until you and the king arrived. And the king's like, yeah, whatever. So let's, wh what do you want? It's, it's very much the, the woman behind the man kind of thing. She, she appreciates what's going on. She realizes what Theron is like and yeah. And the, you know, the mention of the, the Stephen McHattie's councilman role, you know, you know, should, should we meet, you know, in the courtyard? No, let's just meet here. It's, but eyes and ears, you know, it's this, you know, it's, it's established that the rumors might spread. And, you know, she, when she finds that the only way he will support her is, you know, the, the sex, basically rape, she, you know, she goes along with that and then the, you know, then, then he turns around and cries you know, adulterous, it's, you know, he, he is the kind of slime ball politician, you know, like, like she calls him a, an opportunist, you know, and you, you hate him, hate his very being every single moment he's on screen, and it is such, it, 
it's it just it's such joy to see him being stabbed by the queen and her you know returning the words you know this will not be over quickly you will not enjoy this and not your queen you know and I, I would talk about like my favorite dialogue but almost every line here is just so memorable and quotable you know a bunch of it even made it into the trailer just yeah it's it's fantastic and I, I understand that apparently the the thing of Spartans what is your pr I, I can't do justice for Spartans what is your profession and then you know uh, uh, uh. that's apparently being used by a sports team a, and I think it's American football that's I'm sorry football that's awesome that I I am I hate sports but that is awesome that is that is absolutely perfect that is exactly the kind of thing that that line should be used for and just yeah now the I think that I've already talked some about Gorgo. I think Lena Headey does great work with everything she's, you know, given to. I mean, without, I mean, early on she she says little, but just her her face, you know, the back and forth between her and Leonidas when you know he's, you know, just before this is Sparta. And, yeah, just the, the various things, you know, she, she confides in Stephen McCaddy's councilman. And the, the passion, impassioned, yeah, the, the passionate speech she gives to the council, you know, the, the, you know, having to admit that yes, it will be difficult to give up her son for the you know the warriors training, all this stuff, just you know, yeah, she's she's fantastic every every moment of screen time. Now, I quite like the partial victory that that Leonidas gets over Xerxes to make the god king bleed to you know he he's he is now scarred so he can never completely you know no one can look at him and he can't look in the mirror without the realization that after all, he is just a man. He is not. He is not invulnerable. He is not as godly as he would like to be. And just this, you know, you you don't really expect him to give up. You know that he's not just going to, you know, kneel before Xerxes. So the. The fact that he does it is purely a ruse in order to get to, to throw the spear at Xerxes. And the whole thing with, you know, taking off the helmet and putting down the shield. Because the helmet partially obscures his vision and he has to, you know, he has to be able to see far. He has to be able to aim far. And he, you know, the, the shield throws him off balance and his target is far away. And he throws the spear right after Stelios has killed the, the, you know, captain or whatever. And you see the spear going over the, the steps up to Xerxes and cuts across and just, 
yeah, it's it's fantastic. The this thing of you know he he may not be able to kill Xerxes, but Xerxes it's it, you know he he will affect Xerxes. And sort of the, the scar that he gives him, you know, kind of represents the, the damaged reputation as well. 300 Spartans, you know, forced back the, the troops of the mighty Persian Empire, the, the, you know, these thousands, apparently a million people, for, for several days, I don't remember if it's supposed to be a week or what exactly, but yeah, it's, you know, it, it very much does give that kind of, it, yeah, it, it draws that into question. It, it makes the others, it, it gives the rest of Greece the courage to stand and fight. And then you have the, the ending with, well, now we're only outnumbered three to one, you know. And we're, we're here on Plataea, and, you know, as I understand, that was the final battle. That was where Xerxes was defeated in the actual history. And that's, that's a fantastic way to, to finish it off with this, you know, Delios not only returned to the council to retell what happened, he, he has told it to this enormous force and they're now ready to, you know, fight off the, the Persians. And I can only imagine that the way he's been able to communicate with all these thousands of people was to yell like one sentence to the first group who then turn around and yell it to the next and and so on and so forth. It would be very interesting indeed to hear what the the last you know, the, the final end of that game of telephone actually heard. But I suppose that pretty well covers it. I suppose the 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 different chronological yeah the the, the timeline changes are worth bringing up. In the comic, a lot of this stuff is kind of said as it becomes important. So, basically the, the comic starts with them already marching, and the comic keeps going back to them marching, and then they get to the hot gates, and then the, the battle starts. And through this marching, it'll occasionally go back, so it'll, it'll go back to when the, you know, the, the emissary arrived and got kicked into the well, and, you know, the, the, the bit about the eugenics is put in somewhere. I, th I think that actually appears the first time Ephialtes really shows up in, in the comic, and yeah, these these various things, and yeah, like I said in the review, it just that kind of thing works better in a comic, where in a film, it's it's I I think it was a good idea to straighten out the timeline, and to just add more you know it it cut, cuts back and forth between Sparta and Thermopylae, where. You know, we see back at Sparta how Gorgo is gradually working towards getting reinforcements for Leonidas. And, of course, the, the scene where they find the village or town, which has been just destroyed and their dead bodies been used as, you know, to construct something, which... 
I suppose is supposed to be what gives the Spartans the idea for, you know, the wall built of men. And, yeah, it, again, it serves to show why the Persians are this great evil force that have to be stopped, where in the comic it's a bit more... It's, it's not really said exactly why, and part of it is also just the, the nature of the mediums. With a comic, if you just start reading and suddenly you come across, you know, what, what ancient Persian Empire and the Spartans are worried about it, why? And you can go to Wiki and find out. But when you're in a theater, the film kind of does have to make sure to tell you everything. Or make it clear enough that you don't need it to be more, you know, fleshed out. I mean, it's... the... the Carnea festival is not gone into great detail. We're just told that that's what they're supposed to honor. They're not supposed to go to war during that. So, yeah. I suppose that pretty well covers it. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.